Morning staging at Indianapolis took on a special significance as the teams lined up three abreast in 11 rows. The traditional positioning for the start of the Indy 500. The pace of the morning parade lap may have been a bit slower than its Memorial Day counterpart. More than one driver left the track with a lump in their throat and a tear in their eye. They could now say that they've driven it Indy. Uh, that was awesome out there. Yeah, I'm out of here. These college teams were making history, and many people wanted to be on hand to witness their efforts. I see this on TV. Oh, that's me. Yeah. That's different. Gosh. Michigan's team included a weather van with meteorologists. Their input proved as valuable as all the mechanical and electrical engineers. It allowed the team to plan how much power they could use and what kind of sunlight could be expected to recharge those batteries. With only one day left, Michigan and Western Washington held a strong grip on their respective positions in the overall standings. Both teams established their strategies as effective and their cars sturdy. Yet both teams remained cautious. The battle was shaping up for third place and the last GM sponsorship to the World Solar Challenge in Australia. Cal State LA, Maryland, and Crowder College were all vying for third overall. The position was still up for grabs as the teams headed for the GM Technical Center in Warren. A sunny morning on the final day of GM Sunrace USA set the stage for a fast finish. The Goodyear blimp was on hand to record the chase as Maryland let it be known that its sights were set on Australia. They opened up a lead of almost an hour on Cal State LA and Crowder as they approached the finish line. In second place is Western Washington University. They were in the top three the whole time. The third place car is the University of Maryland. GM Chairman Robert Stemple was at the finish line to welcome the teams to Warren. Actually, everybody who participated in the race is really a winner because the young people learned a great deal. They've had a lot of hard work, a lot of excitement, a lot of fun. But most of all, they're convinced we really can do more with less. We also hope that many students will see this as a good opportunity and stay interested in the engineering and sciences and mathematics. We certainly need those people at General Motors. So I'd like to add my congratulations to all participants in the Solar Challenge. And we thank you today for joining us at the finish of the race. Teamwork and sportsmanship. They proved it again and again during the 11 days of racing. The young men and women of the GM Sunrace teams put in the long hours under some pretty rough conditions. They were both students and teachers. As students, they learned the value of teamwork and the skill of problem solving in the real world. As teachers, they taught by doing. They showed an even younger generation of Americans the importance of math, science, and engineering. The teams were even able to impress some veteran GM engineers. To see the commitment and the excitement and, and just the technical expertise of the, of the college students working on this, it's, it's really been something. It's really uh, reaffirmed that uh, there's a lot of terrific things going on in the engineering schools. Uh, all the students have been terrific, the way they've uh, helped one another. Uh, it's really good to see and it uh, encourages me. The blue-shirted Observer Corps gave up part of their summer and endured the long hours, the heat, rain, and general road weariness to help make GM Sunrace USA possible. Michigan, Western Washington, and Maryland earned General Motors sponsorship to the World Solar Challenge in Australia. GM Sunrace USA 1990 was now in the record books. Each and every one of the people who participated knew this was one step in the right direction towards exploring alternative sources of energy and they were part of history. The three General Motors sponsored teams in the World Solar Challenge made a strong showing down under in November. The University of Michigan Sunrunner finished third overall in the Australian race and had the best time among the American entries. Michigan covered the 1900 mile trek from Darwin to Adelaide in 57 hours and 24 minutes with an average speed of 32.8 miles an hour. Western Washington took fifth place, and Maryland seventh in Australia. Crowder College and Cal State LA also finished in the top ten, and Cal State Polytechnic Pomona took eleventh place in the international field of 36 solar cars. <laughs>